There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. I don't know about you, but I really don't like driving in the dark. In particular, I don't like it when you have to pull out of a junction into a more major road. There are no street lights and you have to work out whether there's enough space. It's really difficult to judge how fast other cars are going because there are no reference points. There's just these two headlights coming towards you and you work, have to work out whether there's a big enough gap or not. The ability to see things in three dimensions needs light because you then have that sense of perspective, that sense of light and of shadow. It's easier to judge distance. It's easier to see things. To see ourselves in three dimensions, we need light from different viewpoints. In those verses that we've just heard from John's Gospel, we hear about John the Baptist being a witness to the light, being a witness to the light of Jesus. Because, as the writer of John's Gospel says, Jesus is the light which enlightens everyone coming into the world. Jesus said that he is the light of the world, a light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness can and will never overcome it. Jesus helps us to see who we really are by being different sorts of light to us. First, he's like the light of a candle, a frail, flickering light, but a light that's warm, a light that's attractive, a light that draws us in. Jesus is like the light of a candle, the light of love. Because candlelight is the light of love. You can think of that romantic candlelit dinner and that light of a candle gives out a soft, intimate light. It draws those two people together as if they're the only two people in the world. And that's what Jesus' light is like. He is the light of a candle. His light is that light of love. Jesus says that you're the most important thing in the whole wide world. He says, that's why I came to earth for you. That's why I was born in a stable in Bethlehem, because of you. That's why I lived. That's why I died for you. Jesus is light when we let his light fall on us is that gentle candlelit light, a light of love, a light of care, a light of peace. Jesus says, come to me with all your loads, with all your burdens, and I will give you rest. But if Jesus can be that soft light of a candle, he can also be that brilliant, bright, shining light. Do you know when you're driving a car and you're either you're driving or you're a passenger and you're driving towards the sun and the sun is streaming into you, streaming through the windscreen into your eyes and you have to pull the visor down and it's still so bright. It's hard to drive, not just because of the brightness of the light shining in your eyes, but because that light shows up all the dirt, all the dust, and all the grime on the windscreen. God's light is also like that brilliant light. It's a light that shines brightly on us, that reveals the dirt and the sin that we have in our lives. But the good thing is that Jesus' light is not like the light of an interrogator shining into our eyes and blinding us. 
His light is one where we can see ourselves for exactly who we are, the good bits and the bad bits. But the good news is that Jesus doesn't leave us in that knowledge of what's good and what's bad. Jesus gives us God's grace, gives us the light of God's forgiveness, the light of God's love. So if there's light like a candle, if there's light like a brilliant light shining straight at you, there's also a third type of light. Jesus's light is like the light of a torch. It's a light that shines in the darkness. It's a shine light that gives us direction, that shows us which way to go. After Jesus proclaims that he is the light of the world, in John 8 verse 12, he says that whoever follows me won't walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus' example, his teaching, gives us direction. It shows us the way to go, shows us the way to live with care, with compassion, with love for one another. This is the direction that we should follow. So Jesus is the light of the world, a light that enlightens us, a light that not only shows us who we are, and not only shows us the way that we should go, a light that shows us that we are loved and that we are precious. Jesus' is light is a light that can never be darkened, that can never be put out. Think about the way that you live. We are called to be like John the Baptist, someone who came to be a witness to the light of God, to the light of Jesus. John was a witness by what he did and by what he said. All that he did testified or was a witness to the love of God. And that is something that God invites us to do. He invites us by what we do, by what we say, by how we live our lives to be that witness like John the Baptist. How are you going to do that this week? Let us pray. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. In the darkness, we light a candle of light, knowing that Jesus is the light of the world. Holy God, as we light this candle, help us to celebrate that Jesus shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. So here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to say that you are God. Amen.